Hi, this is Lewis Gossett. Welcome back to Port Townsend 25 years later. Let's go around and see what's changed. Come with me. Let's see what happens. It's a pleasure. It's, it's a, a good pleasure. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Good, Thank good, good to see you again. Too. Tim Jones. Hey, Tim. How are you? Good. How do you do, sir? Hi, Rough in the Brain. I forgive you for taking the part I interviewed for that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh you play Sugar Bridge's father? Oh, yeah. Boy, well, I got some stories to tell you about Sugar Bridge. I have you in the movie. It's a pleasure. We're glad you came back. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. Good. This is Fort Warden State Park. Welcome. We'll tell you the story about Officer and Gentleman that started here. This is the scene of the crime, man. After that, you know the story. It was a funny little town, great little town, Port Townsend. There's one point that, that Port Townsend was almost San Francisco. If the train had gone there instead. And you can see it, there's these, the, the waterfront there is kind of amazing, but it, it's like a museum now. Real interesting place, you know, fallen on hard times by the time we were there. Port Townsend uh, greeted uh, the Hollywood crew. It was at a bad time economically. The town has had ups and downs economically for its entire history. To get to this point about using a location, one, the local economy needed the money and we really helped them. Two, there was a great unemployment and people were able to come and work on a film. And I forget exactly what it was. It wasn't a naval station that we were we had taken over. It was some kind of a state park or something. Yeah, that was actually a, a was a army base in the 1800s, and it had been restored. It was like a historical place. It wasn't a real army base, but the, the buildings were so beautiful and so well kept that they were able to use that for the, the because the navy didn't want the navy wouldn't cooperate with the movie. That base that we created was just great too, because we had taken a, uh, a part, it was a part of the park system, and we just put a plane up, and all of a sudden it became Pensacola, or our version of Pensacola. Well, the town, Port Townsend, was like stepping right back into the 60s. Uh, everybody was a, a hippie, and every building was Victorian, and uh, it was just it was just a great place to, to be shooting. Uh, people were really nice, and. Uh, uh, we'd take the ferry into Seattle and have some fun, and uh, uh, it was a very warm community, Port Townsend. Most of the people in town, Lowell went down for to try out for a part. I, I got a bit part as uh, Lisa Eilbacher's father, but it was fun. We enjoyed it very much, the crew that were here. Oh, it's cool. It's, it's, uh, Port Townsend's like a place where the hippie movement worked. Everybody there was in earth shoes, long hair, jeans, no makeup. You know, it was just one of those kind of cool, upper, you know, northwestern kind of hippie towns. Well, you know, I mean, again, you know, that location, you know, I mean, it was, was, was a part of the solution. Uh, and so, because we were essentially isolated. Uh, you know, it was, I mean, Port Townsend, you know, at that time was a very strange town. You know, there, there was a lot of counterculture people and lumberjacks. Yeah, and, and, and nothing in between. I think that it's really awesome that they came to Little Port Townsend to film a movie, and that that really, you know, hit me. I thought that was really, really neat. We shot in this place called the Tides Motel, which is called the Tides Motel, and that's where I would meet, you know, my gal, and we'd uh, have premarital sex, unlike anyone else in the Navy. Well, the Tides has been totally transformed uh, and, and remodeled and added to. It doesn't quite look the same. Uh, I think that the uh, room that David Keith hung himself in became very popular after the movie because people, they put a sign on it that said that that's that room and people would come in and want to rent that room specifically. I mean, it's a big tourist attraction now. Then it was just a motel. Now it's a big tourist attraction, and everybody goes there, and they, of course, play it up, and I, I think it probably costs more to stay in the room where I hanged myself than it does the, the other rooms. I remember it now it's coming back to me. 
After the scenes from the Philippines, you see Richard with his motorcycle. He came through here. <laughs> 25 years later. <laughs> Richard Gear, 25 years later. <laughs> And the music is going on, and this is the first day of shooting for me. I was nervous. I just finished running around. There was a track there, if I could remember, somewhere around here. And sure enough, the beginning of the shot comes from this door here. Of course, there's a marine entrance, and the camera was on my scar. And I'd come down the steps. I saw the swizzle stick and the, the stuff, and the guys were lined up right around here. And the rest is history. I had them all lined up here. And we did that first shot I talked about. So that was Taylor's first day, my first day anyway. This is where it all happened, right in here. Somewhere in this area. Ever since there's been a naval base here, there's been what you might call the Puget Sound Dams. So that, uh, that was the line I'm talking about the, uh, the Puget Sound Dams, who were looking for, uh, you know, a guy who's going to be a, a multi-million dollar aviator. But before that, they had to get these haircut in order to get in the Marines. And they, uh, and to, to be a sailor, to be a flyer. And uh, this is where they got the haircut. And after the haircut, they came down this ramp. Especially Tony Plano, who had the most hair. He was amazing with that. I call him the toe head today. That's toe head Tony. <laughs> His hair hasn't been that long since. So this is the first. Uh, Salute scene, I remember that. This is after they had their head uh, shaved. And of course, uh, Deborah Winger and Lisa Blount came out. And the guys were there on the ground. And of course, the famous lines, bodacious set of tatas. They came out of there. Did you see that bodacious set of tatas? A bodacious tata, what a name of the scene. <laughs> <laughs> It was a cold morning, kind of wet. We had to run. We did about 20 runs. It was pretty good, but that was 25 years ago. I can't go up the steps now without taking a deep breath on each level. But I'm still here. <laughs> the best in the regiment is running on by. The, uh, this is the worst group I've ever seen. That's when Buck Welsher came by looking good. If you remember, he was doing Lilo, Lilo. Buck Welsher came with his group, and I told him not to look at them. That could be you at the end of 13 weeks. Those of you who might survive, don't even look at them. You don't deserve to look at them. And then um, I took uh, Richard after he won the, uh, the obstacle course, all doing here, all up and doing here is where the obstacle course was. And that scene there is where that is where you had that uh, triumphant scene where I had got no place to go, up against the fence over there. Get into your fatigues, Mel. By the end of this weekend, you'll quit. So I got him up against the fence, and he had uh, six to 90, it's called. Those are the leg lifts. So six degrees to 90 degrees, and you've got to stick there while you do a long scene. And we must have done that shot maybe 10 or 15 times. So that's again, that's a tribute to Richard Gere, because I did all the talking. He, had all, he did all the six to 90s. But uh, that's probably the, uh, one of the major scenes in the movie. And when I got up, they had the boats, and they, they mooned me. And Richard Gere followed me down this path to uh, toothbrush this, the uh, steps in the barracks. That's what I remember. And we panned, we went down this way. I think the transformation of open space that, that occurred into an actual obstacle course was pretty amazing to all of us. We had a set that was ours. We owned it. All those old bunkers that were built out, you know, in World War II, those were bunkers to try to, you know, aim, you know, cannons at the, at the Japanese in case they, uh, they uh, invaded. But those bunkers sitting there, and I have those people running up and down those bunkers, fantastic. We didn't have any money. But there was a certain kind of raw authenticity to it. And it was on the water. Pensacola is on the water. The whole idea that Scott Paper Factory, which is near Pensacola, is 
where those, those cadets would go try to take those girls out that worked in the paper factory. The same thing in Port Townsend. This street here is where Richard Gere threatened me. He threatened me. So I invited him to the blimp hangar, which is behind us where we're going. And this is when we stopped. This was a tough scene because we had to do the scene coming around this corner. And I had to stop the guys at a certain spot and continue to go on. And, and then I forgot how it was, but the timing, it took 15 takes to get these guys to stop on the dime. It was on me. And I had to do it a certain part of the dialogue. So you can watch the film and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I have to say, um, left, right, left, right. And he says something, I say, halt, one, two. And they have to stop on this mark. Then I had to come back and finish the scene. And it ends with the threat, and we go to the blood hanger. It was a tough one. It took 15 times to do. It was a tough day. But afterwards, I got my revenge. You know what this is? This is what they used to give me in the belt. That's what they give the DIs the day that they become officers. And you take, the, take it and you put it under your belt like that, and you give them for the first time a salute as an officer, a superior officer. So that's what the scene is. And of course, the way they teach you back in San Diego is you, they get under your skin, you know, and you have to sit on it until this final moment. And of course, when Richard Gere came, he said, I'll never forget you. I almost broke, but I didn't. <laughs> I would have made this if it weren't for you. Get the hell out of here. Thank you, Sergeant. And if I'm elected... Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, thank you. Bye bye. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Be back.